you, it's the you I want, it's you. John, 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 come, come, come back. A, a login? Yeah, login. But you know, I uh, used JWT token and I made an API and everything. A login. You made a login. Yeah, a <laughs> login page. All this hours for a login page. The Mac Studio. It's a little box, weighs 5.9 pounds if you opted for an M1 Max, has a great number of ports, it's silent, and it's fast as fudge. All of it was truly built for creatives, which explains why the studio display was released alongside this thing. But as soon as this was released to the public, developers started wondering if this was even worth it for them. I eventually got to work and I truly benchmarked this thing to guide you guys towards making a better software engineering purchase. Believe me, I spent hours coding researching and playing with this Mac. So who is this even for? It's hard to say. My current model has the same N1 Max chip you will find on a fully loaded MacBook Pro 14 inch and 16 inch. The thing is that my Mac Studio costs around $1,200 less than a similar spec 16 inch model. However, you don't get that sweet display, webcam, speakers and great keyboard they incorporated into these things. I primarily enjoy backend development and I noticed a lot of people online debating whether they should get the Mac Studio or the MacBook Pro. Some of them then need the portability as they found they couldn't think properly outside of their room or office and even people willingly cancelling their MacBook orders just to get a more powerful workstation. This made me wonder, is this even a good choice for developers? Why would you give up all of the awesome things a laptop packs up for extra performance that is literally not noticeable? And so here's what I've discovered the past few days after some development time with the studio. I've been trying to get back into building backend server projects. In fact, the first thing I did on this machine was start to build a quick MERN refresh project. It's a small REST API built on Express that would allow me to use tools like Postman and Docker for testing purposes. When it came to downloading packages on NPM, writing code alongside IntelliSense, and even connecting our database to MongoDB, things were smooth. No delays when pushing the project to a repo or anything like that. My development environment was actually extremely smooth no matter what I was doing. This included the fact that I had a lot of Chrome tabs open, some Docker documentation open, and even an Nginx tutorial so I could finish up building my server. I eventually had my whole Docker file set up and I was able to run my node server image without an issue. I did time this process and it took around 24.3 seconds to build the image. If we compare this to the MacBook Pro 14 inch, we only see a few differences in second when building the image. It really isn't much of a big difference that truly matters. However, from the research I've done, I know that Alex Siskin, an underrated tech YouTuber, had previously ran the Getting Started sample project and found it to be slow. A lot of it has to do with the fact that some of the images you download and pull are are most likely x86 based, which essentially uses Rosetta as a translation layer to finalize the build. So technically, the questions that arise have nothing to do with whether or not the Mac Studio is better for development, but more of a, is the M1 worth it for development? I had found a comment from a Docker employee explaining why this happens with ARM64. I strongly suggest you check out Alex's video to see how Docker behaves on complex projects. But going back to the studio, in terms of web development, honestly, you won't notice much of a difference. I did run the speedometer benchmark to truly show what I mean. This essentially runs a bunch of web apps quickly and it shows how well the computer responds to single core use because of JavaScript and multi core use because of the browser. It also uses the GPU to render browser components. This benchmark is all about how fast and snappy your computer can be while coding web apps. Remember that software development is all about building, compiling, browsing the web, interacting with a terminal, maybe connecting a server via SSH, and even using hot reload just like NodeMon provides. I think the extra power makes no difference when doing web development tasks, mostly when comparing the MacBook Pro 14 inch and the Mac Studio. If you would like to learn web technologies such as MERN, I think a bootcamp could help you do so if you enjoy structured learning. 
Coding Dojo is a global technology education company that offers three full stack coding boot camps. Whether you want to learn the leading industry Python tools, their full Java stack to eventually work in things such as server apps at the financial services, or even learn Mern to create awesome e-commerce websites. Coding Dojo can allow you to maximize your career opportunities and have the chance to dive deep into software development data science, and even cybersecurity. Their curriculum is very well designed to make this your first and last bootcamp you'll ever attend so you can start tackling projects and truthfully learn even more by doing. If it's of interest to you, you can download their course packet and check out exactly what you will be learning. I did personally attend their online session and had access to multiple of their classes. They do deliver hands-on and structured teaching, which will allow you to develop your coding skills a lot quicker. And I honestly thought the online learning experience was far superior from when I was attending my computer science classes online at university. Don't worry though, if you can't attend full-time, you also have the ability to do it part-time if it's a career change you're thinking of. Plus, after graduation, Coding Dojo ensures they are always there for you by being able to reach out to your career service managers again to reorient you and find the most suitable career in the industry. Look, I learn a lot by doing projects, but I've also realized you need the proper guidance to grow into self-sufficiency so you can learn how to be a developer. If Node.js, React.js, and other technologies interest you in order to be able to build your own server web apps, I think you guys should check out Coding Dojo to develop your coding skills and learn technologies quickly. Now, when it comes to virtual machines, the M1 architecture is limited. The limitation leads to the fact that you cannot run a VM inside another VM on M1. It's mostly a hardware limitation and sadly cannot be fixed with software. However, the M1 is very much capable of running virtual machines. One of them is UTM, which is a free and open source emulator based on QEMU. While UTM is pretty easy to set up and runs pretty smoothly on M1, there are some glitches and bugs whether you install the OS from their gallery or not. As of now, it mainly has to do with the fact that QEMU and UTM cannot talk directly to the host OS, meaning that it's hard for the VM to achieve maximum performance on things like GPU acceleration. Don't get me wrong, GPU acceleration is still supported, but it's nowhere near as good as running it natively on macOS. This causes these little graphical glitches, a bit of lag here and there, and as much as I tried to run the Geekbench GPU benchmark, it was of course not possible. Web benchmark scores also reflected this, which totally makes sense due to limitations with the GPU. None of this limited my experience when doing some SSH work on my server though. I was easily able to set up a full Nginx server to mess around with some of my Node.js applications. Just know that installing Windows on UTM is hell. That's why I recommend using Parallels. Well, it's it's not the only reason as to why I recommend it, but of the bad, Parallels is a lot more functional. Just know that it comes at a cost. The free version and home version can only allocate up to 4 CPU cores to your VM, and it's why I recommend getting a paid one if you truly want to take advantage of all of your M1 Max cores. This will definitely help you when it comes to delivering a smooth Windows and Linux experience, to the point that Parallels can deliver near native performance. If you take your development seriously and you want great virtualization, performance, this is the tool you should be using. However, if you are an iOS developer, you are most likely using Xcode to build your applications. Xcode on the Mac Studio has been running extremely well. For comparison, with both the Mac Studio and the base MacBook Pro 14 inch, I cloned an Xcode project I found on GitHub so we could test out the simulator. These are pretty small projects, but it will give you an idea of how much performance you will be gaining with the studio. I had to speed ramp this clip a bit because I had indeed compiled the project and ran the simulator from scratch. With a time difference of about 6 seconds, this definitely gives you sort of an idea of the performance gain you will benefit from this, although in my opinion a few seconds or minutes really don't matter. You see, when you are developing apps, you often let your project compile in the background while you're still doing other things things, whether that's checking out your UI, replying to emails, or writing some backend code to interact with your app, both of these machines are able to smoothly multitask while your Xcode app compiles and runs in the background. This is why benchmarking numbers never tell the full story, 
Practical use is what can define a computer over an extensive period of time. Look, a few weeks ago, I even ran a couple of benchmark tests using Xcode Benchmark and the difference weren't that significant to justify the change. This time around with this beefier spec, we do get a couple of seconds difference when compiling this project if we compare it to its base model. If we start to run a heavy enterprise-like project such as WebKit, things get interesting. By the way, to put things into perspective, WebKit is the web browser engine used by Safari. It's a huge project that honestly the Mac Studio really doesn't seem to struggle at all if we navigate the project, click on tabs, search the project files, and even go to the extent of writing code to see if IntelliSense pops quickly. Execution times when we build this very project took about 17 minutes, and while this was happening, the peak surface temperatures of the studio never really surpassed 27 degrees. Made sense since we are seeing internal temperatures of about 60 degrees or so. The cool thing is that while this was running, doing any other type of work on the studio was very much possible. You can see within the activity monitor that the history of the CPU shows the spikes while multitasking. And the 14 inch MacBook will get a very similar experience until you run into some RAM issues. So for huge projects, I think the main thing to take into account is RAM before even wanting to upgrade the CPU. CPU. Mostly if you decide to use the simulator alongside your current build. I just don't know if I would personally choose the Mac Studio over the M1 Pro 14 inch. You do get 3 times your money's worth but does it make your workflow 3 times as fast? For IntelliJ, maybe. I decided to test a pretty heavy open source Java project called RxJava. It is based on reactive extensions and the project is pretty much a library for composing asynchronous and event-based programs by using observable sequences. Very much for reactive programming which refers to the scenario where programs react as and when data appears. There are a lot of built-in tests within this project that we can run to test things out along a few little tools within the IDE that will tell the full story. When it comes to opening the project itself, both machines are very similar, providing both projects were used prior. Within the project, the activity monitor on both machines yield very different CPU usage. There was also significant differences when taking a look at startup times of plugins between the MacBook and the Mac. I mean, Kotlin for starters already yields a startup time difference of about 500 milliseconds. Not that it matters since a lot of people are still having issues with KMM development. Regardless, there was no struggle at all if we navigated the project, clicked on some of our test files, searched for project files, and even go to the extent of writing code to see if IntelliSense pops quickly. Within Gradle, you will find the test task we are trying to run, but before doing so, we wanted to make sure we were going to start with clean runs. When we ran the Gradle test command, we decided to test the IDE a bit more to compare its performance. The studio really handles it well, and I would say it's a smoother experience than the 14 inch when running this project in the background. Fans did kick in, but apart from that, for such a medium sized project library, the contents of folders do appear quickly, icons render fast, navigating taps is no problem and IntelliSense appears with a bit of a delay. Comparing this to the MacBook, I did find the IDE in the MacBook a bit slow when doing this test. IDE's parsing a file is a single core computation, but when IntelliJ uses its analyzer on the entire project, well, it becomes a single and multi-core task to be able to update the UI which is a GPU intensive could explain the difference in user experience. So this made me want to test the GPU for developers and I thought that a great way of doing so was by using Unity. I was told by a friend of mine to buy a couple of sci-fi scenes that can really push this machine for testing purposes and honestly after testing these, he was right. These do push the machine quite a lot but the Mac Studio handles it so well. This is a Unity standard pipeline developed in C Sharp and the Mac Studio renders it without an issue. In fact, the scene consists of about half a million triangles and navigating it was super smooth. It's very much a pleasant experience and makes me realize the potential of M1. I pretty much ran the same project on my RTX 3080 Ti and they both feel the same in terms of moving things around. When I compiled the game and look at the stats, I saw that we were staying at around 150 frames per second when playing. Do know that the only things I had open on the Mac Studio other than Unity was Chrome and VS Code. The second project did run a lot slower and it's because it's an HDRP project with over 2 million polygons. 
Navigating the scenes was hard and it mainly has to do with the fact that it's using an HDRP pipeline, to the point that frames per second were all over the place when playing the scene. Look, M1 Studio is by no means a gaming machine but for game development creation tools, things can run well. I am not a game developer nor have tried something like Unreal Engine so please take these tests with a grain of salt. However, I can definitely tell you that it looks extremely promising so do your research. Look, the Mac Studio for most development use cases seems to be overkill in my experience. In fact, at my old college, their computer science department wanted to change their iMacs to Mac Studios, but the ROI wasn't significant enough to make the changes, mostly because of the performance differences for teaching code and the fact that you can't use bootcamp. I think for enterprise-grade software and huge projects, it could make sense, but for most of us individuals, not really. In fact, I have friends that work at Expedia, some at Shopify and even Google, they don't seem to be struggling with their current MacBooks. I hope the examples and tests we made today helps you out. I recommend checking out the MacBook Air or even the MacBook Pro 14 inch for programming. I hope we get a MacBook Air M2 this year, only time will tell. I'm signing out guys, take care.